Welcome to my realistic character rigging up the effects, or I should rather say semi-realistic. For the sake of this tutorial, I chose the character of Sue. That's the girl in pink dress. Sue is a vectorized drawing of an actual girl aged 6. The illustrator file as well as After Effects project file is included with this tutorial. Just follow the link below the video if you want to get a better understanding of how it's made or perhaps try animating the character yourself. So let's start from preparing the puppet. Obviously, I won't go into detail how I drew it, apart from the face, which is the realistic part of the character, I think it's pretty simple. So like basic understanding of Illustrator would be enough. There are a few things we must remember though. All parts of the puppet which we want to animate must be uh, on separate layers before importing into After Effects. It's also very important to name them in a fashion that makes sense to you. As you can see, I developed it into a habit and separated even hair, nose, though later it proved that I didn't actually need them separate since I didn't animate them at all. Anyway, we keep it that way. We won't change anything here. As you can see, since we go after a realistic puppet, we need a great deal of detail. My other characters in the same animation do not have as many mouth shapes, for example, or uh, shapes of the hands and so on. Here we have eight shapes of the mouth, which correspond to eight main phoneme groups. Just Google the word phoneme, or phoneme lip sync, or phoneme mouth chart, and you can download one of them to draw your mouth. In my opinion, there's no point experimenting here, as all cartoon characters you see on TV or so on have more or less the same shapes. This is a foreign phoneme mouth chart I use. As you can see, I overlaid my mouth shapes and use it as guideline when lip syncing my character. When you draw your mouth shapes, stack them one on another to make sure that they more or less fit one each other. Okay, now the eyes. As you can see, I drew separate eyelids, upper and lower eyelid, which means we may have altogether four eye shapes when animating, fully open, fully closed, and two half-closed poses to give additional expression to the character. Okay, let's lock those layers and check what's under. As you can see, we have separate whites and the pupil. It's important for the two-dimensional character, it's the only actual way to indicate where she looks by changing the position of the pupil. You must remember to draw the eyelids big enough so they actually cover the movement of the pupil. Okay, one more thing here. Be generous with the neck. Make it quite long if we want to have some exaggerated cartoon moves later on. She may extend her neck, uh, head can overshoot when jumping, etc. I think that's it. Let's move to the rest of the body. Okay, here we are. The body follows the same pattern. When creating limbs, like legs or arms, it's most effective to base them on a perfect circle. Let's zoom in on the leg. Once you rotate it, Choose Rotate tool, shortcut R, and place the pivot point in the middle of this circle. Then rotate. As you can see, it's a seamless rotation. Ok, let's move on now to the arms. At this point I'd like to demonstrate two approaches to building them. First one, more let's say dirty but a little bit faster, and the other one more organized by taking a bit more time. Let's examine the first way in which I build this character's arm. Let's take apart the arm. As you can see, the basic premise is that the arm is built of two overlying layers. One with the stroke and the other one without the stroke on top of that. Plus the perfect circle, which is the basis of our arm arrangement. Ok, let's build one arm from scratch using this primitive approach. Let's draw a circle by selecting the oval tool and drawing when holding shift. This way we restrain X and Y axis, make it in the perfect circle. Let's give it a stroke, let's say 2 or, or 3 will do. And on top of that we'll build a rectangle 
on the basis of our circle. Let's make sure that they align. Center of the circle uh, matches exactly the bottom of our rectangle. It doesn't have to be perfect, so don't fuss about it too much. Let's uh, duplicate the rectangle by clicking Ctrl C and pasting this in the same place by pressing Ctrl F. Then holding Shift, let's move it down so we restrain it in vertical position. Okay, and let's copy and paste in place the circle. Let's select one rectangle with one circle and we'll merge them using the Pathfinder tool available in the window menu as you can see over here. Let's do the same with the other rectangle and the circle. As you can see we have two the same shapes. Let's paste in place our circle which you already have copied and remove the stroke from it. Let's shrink it so it fits our arm using the scale tool until we are actually happy with what we can see. Okay, at this point we have to get rid of the visible stroke line from our bottom layer. Uh, we can cover it by adding another small rectangle over here or just adjusting or simply playing with the shape itself. Something like this will do. Let's separate now the upper joint and the lower joint to two different layers. And we'll choose now the rotate tool, shortcut R, and place our pivot point in the center of our circle. Now we can bend the arm uh, as we wish, and uh, as you can see, it's pretty seamless. The only problem is that sharp edge over here. We need to adjust it so it that somehow transitions more smoothly. Let's do it by playing with our layer below or our circle like that. As I mentioned, this method is pretty crude, but in most cases will do. Should you lose track of the center of your circle, or let's say two, those, two of those uh, layers somehow misaligned, don't panic. Here's an easy fix to that, which actually works both in After Effects and Illustrator as well. Uh, just switch on the Transparency tool and change the blending mode of the top layer to Difference or Overlay. As you can see, we can exactly see where those two layers overlap. Okay, let's adjust this, and I think this will do. Remember, it doesn't have to be perfect. Even better, if you have small imperfections, it gives this kind of, let's say, hand-drawn look to the whole composition. Okay, our arm just is, is very straight, as you can see, and we can definitely uh, try to do something about it so it loses this computer-generated feel to it. Okay, to do so, we'll use the warp tool, and let's change its default setting by double clicking on the tool and we can change let's say to something smaller making the diameter let's say 10 or 20 and making the pressure more gentle let's say 5 or 10 will do now we can distort our arm giving that hand a little bit hand drawn look as you can see the result is pretty pleasing Now let's move on to the second approach, which I discovered later on when building my other characters. I would say it's more accurate, and uh, this time we will do the black stroke in After Effects. Beginning is exactly the same. Uh, we need our circle as the base, but this time with no stroke. We'll beat our rectangle on it. and copy and paste in place our circle. Move it to a new layer, and let's call it circle for clarity. 
and then this time we'll lock it so we wouldn't accidentally move it. Again we'll build two parts of our arm as we did before. Okay, let's take our circle, we'll have to unlock it and change its color to, let's say, something visible like red. Using the scale tool, let's change it to something very small, I would say 2 or 3% will do. Now we can easily see where the center of our circle is, so we won't have to play hide and seek with our blending modes later on. Let's copy the red circle to the layer below, of course we'll copy and paste in place, using our shortcut Ctrl C and Ctrl F. Let's save it and import to After Effects, as composition obviously, to have access to individual layers. Now we can see clearly where our pivot point is and using the pan behind tool we can easily adjust it over here with great precision as you can see. Let's now create a new background layer to see better what we will be trying to do later on. As you can see, the rotation is perfect. So let's duplicate our layer using shortcut Ctrl D and rename them to have better understanding of what is happening. Let's parent the bottom layers to top layers. If you cannot see the parent tool, you have to right click on this panel over here and select this tool over here. Now we have to somehow get rid of our red dot. For this uh, purpose we can use the field effect, however, if you want to, let's say, keep your animation in 16-bit color scheme or higher, like say, like 32, would be better off using a 16 or 32-bit effect, like, for example, tint, which is a 32-bit effect. This way you won't experience any color distortion later on when rendering. To do so, just use the tint effect and change its two colors to one, and you have yourself a 32-bit fill effect. Now let's copy the fill effect uh, to the bottom layer and change it to black. Now we have to add another effect, uh, which is called Simple Choker, and once we do that, we change the settings to negative values. Additional benefit of using this particular method of building the rig is that we have easily changed the stroke, the thickness of our stroke, to something thicker or thinner. All we have to do right now is just mask the bottom layer in this part so it wouldn't show. We have to adjust it to something that looks nice and we are happy with. Obviously it requires a little bit of, let's say, uh, playing around with it. So let's experiment and see where it takes us. I think this is perfect enough. Obviously, as we did in the previous, uh, using the previous technique, you can distort the arm, making it look more hand-drawn.